Hi, welcome to OpenLink Insights. My name is Doug Windler, EVP of America's Energy for OpenLink. Today we're going to talk about netback pricing. Today we're joined by Wendy Orlando, OpenLink's product manager on the topic of netback. Thanks for joining us, Wendy. Hey, Doug. So, Wendy, what's happening in the industry that has so many people thinking about netback and transparency? For producers, regulatory compliance is a major concern. There are audits by the Bureau of Ocean Energy Management related to payments for federal and Indian lands. There's documentation required for regulatory payments by state agencies. And there's also publicly traded companies that are required to record revenues on their financial statements. And not to mention, there are lawsuits that these businesses have to defend and related to royalty payments. So all of these items have one common theme and one solution, and that is that you need to have a clear business process and you need to have supporting documentation to back up what you paid and how it was calculated. This is critical. What are some of the lo logistical issues making net back calculations more complex? Well, Doug, if you think about the transportation and processing optionality involved, this could make netback a lot more complex for crude oil and natural gas. Let's take crude oil, for instance, where there's multiple modes of transport. You may start on the lease and move that crude by truck to a rail facility and then to a pipeline before it's eventually sold. There's many rates along that transportation process that need to be taken into consideration for netback. Also, if you think about natural gas, natural gas has processing and fractionation, and then eventually you have residue gas and natural gas liquids, or NGLs. So you have multiple units of measure that need to be considered when calculating your wellhead net back price. Then if you think about LNG, that brings a whole new set of factors because LNG, if you think about that process, you start out with your natural gas supply and then it's moved by a pipeline. Then it has to go to a liquefaction facility before it's loaded onto a vessel. It's shipped across the globe. Then it's regasified, loaded onto a pipe, and then eventually sold to an end user. So that entire value chain needs to come into consideration in your calculation of your net back. And finally, if you think about how LNG supply contracts are valued, they're usually valued based on your sales contract. Therefore, there needs to be transparency into your sales formula so you can get an accurate valuation of your supply contracts. So I assume all this transparency is helping us run our businesses more profitably. Absolutely. Obviously, you need to value your revenues properly and you have to pay your royalty owners properly. However, this data can also help you in decision making and analyzing your options and your contracts when doing contract negotiation. If you think about natural gas right now, prices are really low. Do you shut in your well or do you move gas to a more profitable market? That's one of the decisions NetBack can help you make. Also, when deciding which mode of transport or which storage contract makes most sense. Um, when evaluating your sales contracts. With profit margins really under pressure right now, it's really important to have this net back data available to help you make P&L decisions. Businesses can use this data to look at their supply, transport, and sales contracts. They can determine the best options and what helps them maximize their profit. Also, there are several different business units and all of these business units use transfer pricing to move prices from one unit to the next. Transparency into this is very important so they comply with arm's link versus non-arm's link transactions. And this just allows companies to record profits accurately in their business units but still complying with the rules and regulations set forth. So how are companies dealing with this today? What best practices do you see in the market? Doug, unfortunately, today most companies are still using spreadsheets. This is really inefficient. Um, some of the net back calculations can be inconsistent and it's really unsustainable. Look for a system that has consistent net back calculations, a system that can handle multiple commodities as well as multiple unit of measures, a system that stores all of the detailed components related in net back as well as the cost and sales components related to those net back calculations. And finally, a system that can handle prior period adjustments for all of the changes or updates you get from pipeline and pricing data.
Thank you, Wendy, for joining us today. My pleasure, Doug. And for those of you watching, if you'd like to learn more about NetBack, please go to our website at www.openlink.com where you can check out our recent white paper, Getting to a New Transparency in NetBack. Thanks for watching. <laughs>